Hello everyone, welcome to Switch Up. We've got another review for you today, this time of Rising Hell, and this one was written for us by our newest writer, Jeffrey Martin. Jeffrey has his own channel, the Indie Gaming Guild. He produces some fantastic stuff over there. I will put a link to it in the top pinned comment. Please do go along and have a look. Perhaps subscribe while you're there, that would be fantastic. Rising Hell is a vertical scrolling action roguelite taking place in the deepest reaches of hell. Featuring high octane combat and a steady challenge level, this indie game really sounds like it has a lot to love. But will it set the world on fire or should it burn for all eternity? Well, thank you to the publishing team for the review code. And now, let's find out. In Rising Hell, you take on the role of Arok, a hell warrior who is on a mission. Lucifer has gone rogue, betraying his devilish brethren, and has now been taken captive in a demonic tower. Four archdemons guard the realms, and only Arok and his companions are truly up to the task of breaking Lucifer's seal. So gameplay wise, Rising Hell is first and foremost a roguelite, and whilst roguelites have become commonplace on the Switch, Rising Hell certainly has some unique selling points. The first of these is that it is a vertical scrolling 2D game. Where many roguelites opt for the traditional room-based side-scrolling affair, Rising Hell sets itself apart from the competition by always moving you upward through the tower. When you first start off the game, you are only given the option to play as Arok, who is equipped with a claw-like gauntlet. There are two other unlockable characters, but I won't go into too much detail with them since that would spoil the surprise. Just know they each have different stats in areas such as durability, power, agility and speed. Arok himself is a well-rounded character who specialises in fast and frenetic up close and personal melee attacks. Each new unlockable gauntlet augmentation provides both a positive and negative effect, such as not being able to be injured by spike traps but making Arok take 10% more damage, by way of an example. It's a nice system of balancing the scales so you are never too powerful to blaze through this challenging game. To quickly explain the unlocks in Rising Hell, you can earn purple blight gems that are used to either unlock a new character, a new claw or weapon augmentation, or to re-roll artifact upgrades during your runs, but more on that in a bit. Although this is a roguelite where you will die a lot, needing to restart from the beginning, the game does fortunately offer an easier mode called Redemption Mode, where you essentially have free lives but you gain less XP overall. As you start your first run in the Pit of Torments, you are tasked with constantly moving upwards, taking out the devious demons that lie in your path. Arok and each of the characters are able to jump, double jump and wall jump with an incredible amount of fluidity. Simply controlling your character feels like a joy due to the quick and almost sprightly nature of the movement. In order to really get into the flow, which in turn increases your combo meter, you can essentially jump and uppercut into multiple enemies in order to stay mobile. There is a nice kinetic energy to move in and attacking all at once. Fortunately as well, your character also has a phase dash, which can quickly get you out of harm's way. There is even an invulnerability frame, which is a huge blessing in a punishing game such as this. As you continue to ascend the demonic tower, you will stumble across safe zones in which you can purchase upgrade artifacts from Mephisto the Trickster. The currency of choice here are red souls, which are acquired from defeating enemies and finding red soul containers. There are a great number of artifacts on display here, with some giving you more damage, some may well lower the health of the Hell Lieutenant, whilst others may give you more green orbs for health. These are just a few of the variety on offer, but should you be unhappy with the ones you are offered, simply save your red souls for another upgrade room, or re-roll them using Blightstones. Eventually you will come across Demon Lieutenants who can put up a decent challenge, but not in comparison to the Arch Demons you face at the end of each world. These massive and punishing archdemons will really challenge your skills. Fortunately, each archdemon has a giant percentage bar showing exactly how much health is left. I really appreciate a simple yet effective design touch such as these. Some archdemons such as Beezlebub and Dagon also spawn minions who can be defeated for weapons or health. Should you finish the world and chapter, you get scored and ranked on how well you performed, earning yourself a reward in the process, but should you die at any point in your run, you lose all of your artifacts, but you do level up a reward meter, which unlocks additional artifacts and weapons. This reward and XP system keeps you moving forward and progressing after each run. Finally, there is a gauntlet style mode for extra punishment, should you wish to test your skills even further. Gameplay here is refined, polished, and more importantly, just a whole lot of fun, and it scores 18 out of 20. 
Controls are very precise and I liked the fluidity that going from a jump into an uppercut for example afforded you and they score 17 out of 20. In terms of the visuals, Rising Hell offers up a fantastic 2D pixel art style and one that pops with colour and vibrancy. While not wholly unique in regards to other similar roguelites, Rising Hell does a great job at bringing the foreground, the enemies and the environmental hazards to life even in this hellish landscape. Since the game is so fast paced, you might miss that behind the tower that you are ascending are some downright gorgeous if haunting backdrops. The depth on offer in terms of visual presentation is a feast for the eyes and keeps you glued to the screen. As you move from mini zone to mini zone within a world, the colour palette changes adding in some details such as fungus and growths in the decaying swamp like areas as an example. Performance wise things run smoothly for the most part although I did experience the occasional stutter and dropped frame. Nothing that affects the game too much but it is noticeable when it happens. When playing in handheld mode things are mostly the same in that respect and whilst I did find that the zoomed out view made things a little small at times especially your main character, it's perfectly playable and the writing is of a fair size even for me that doesn't have the best of eyesight. In terms of audio, Rising Hell provides one of the most heart pounding and thrilling soundtracks I've heard in a while. The soundtrack here is all about symphonic metal from meticulous guitar solos to crescendoing riffs to gothic inspired synthetic melodies and these are all interwoven. The level of depth in each track absolutely sinks its claws into you, enhancing the overall demonic hell theme. Sure it won't be to everyone's taste but if you love some heavy music then Rising Hell offers it in spades. Your character makes the standard grunts as he moves upward with enemies emitting screeches and growls. This part is nothing particularly stand out but it does blend well together with the kinetic gameplay. Visuals here are certainly on point and really do show just how wonderful 2D pixel art can still look minus the occasional stutter here and there and they get 17 out of 20. The audio is presented with gusto, ferocity and power leading to some pumping metal tracks although the character grunts and enemy squeals do get slightly repetitive but on the whole audio gets 18 out of 20. Rising Hell costs £7.99 and regional equivalents are on your screen now. To be fair this is an absolute steal. I do worry that a lot of people will pass this game by thinking it's just a budget roguelite with a mediocre premise and gameplay. To do so would be a huge shame because Rising Hell might just be one of the best roguelites available on the Switch. While the worlds themselves aren't overly long, the level of polish, refinement and fun here will keep you coming back for more. And because this is a roguelite that rewards both patience and dedication, players on board with this premise should be able to get at least 8-10 to 10 hours out of the game. Value scores 18 out of 20. To conclude, Rising Hell is an incredibly fun, tight, responsive and highly polished action roguelite adventure. The game puts you right into the thick of the action, providing a simple to pick up and play style but a near endless challenge curve for those willing to invest the time into this devilish world. Fans of the genre will have a lot to love and newcomers will find a game that keeps them put. Death in this game isn't as frustrating as you may imagine because you will be excited to get right back into the action and the beautiful pixel art and that pumping metal soundtrack make the decision to do so even easier as you attempt to fend off the denizens of hell. Rising Hell gets a switch up score of 88%. Thank you everybody for watching this review, I hope you enjoyed it, please do remember to leave a like if you did. Another huge thank you to Jeffrey for writing this one for us, he's done a fantastic job on his first review for switch up. As I said I'll put a link to his channel, the Indie Gaming Guild, in the top pinned comment, please do go over there and have a look, he really does produce some fantastic content. A quick thank you to our Patreons as always for your continued support and to each and every one of you for watching our videos, take care, stay safe of course and until next time, happy gaming.